Let's talk about custom actions. Now, custom actions are just like any other actions that you add in the action flow editor. So they're just blocks of logic of code that you can execute here in response to some sort of action like an on tap or a long press. So we have all of these predefined actions right here, but sometimes you need something else. And that's where custom actions come in. And you could create them here or we can create them in our custom code editor. So just come up here and let's add an action. Now, custom actions look similar to custom functions, but there's two main differences. The first one is what we've already seen, that is where you use them. So custom functions you use in your set from variable, so your data bindings, remember, in here, whereas custom actions are used in your action flow editor. The other main difference is that you can use pub dev packages with custom actions right down here, but you can't with custom functions. Okay, so let's write a custom action. And for this, I'm going to use a pubdev package that's a UUID generator. This is used for generating unique IDs. Okay, so the first thing we need is we need to grab this package name so we can paste it into Flutterflow. So we would just want to add that dependency and paste it in here. Great. Next, let's give our action a name. So we're UUID generator and let's set the return type. So it's going to return a string. All right, great. So let's grab the boilerplate now and copy it to the editor. Next, we want to load this package into our editor right here. So let's just refresh. And now we're ready to do the code. So let's jump back over to PubDev to see an example. So if we just scroll down, we can see we need to import the library and initialize it. So let's just grab that. So we can paste it in and the import should go outside of the function. So I'm going to use my shortcut option up arrow to move it up and give it a little bit more space and shift option F to format. All right, let's go back to the documentation and see how to generate one of these UUIDs. Okay, so here we've got a couple different options and let's just do a random ID. So that's just this V4 method. So we're gonna come down here, we're gonna return a UUID and we've got auto completion. So we can just grab that four. Great, so let's save this action and compile. And it looks like we've got an error, so let's check our debugger. And it says that we have a dependency called Flutter Cache Manager, which depends on UUID 3. Oh, so we can just bump down our dependency to 3 for now. That's fine. And let's compile again. Awesome. So let's go bind this in our UI. So what we want to happen is when the user clicks on this Generate UUID, it shows up right here. Now you may think, okay, so we have to have a page state variable and we run that action and we write to that. But actually, you have direct access to the output variables of custom actions. So we don't need that intermediary step of setting a variable. So let me show you how that works. So we've got the button here. Let's come over here. Let's add an action. We can look at the bottom here to our UUID generator. And we just need to set the action output variable name. This is important because you won't see the binding in here unless you give this a name. So we're just gonna call it UUID. And now we can come over to our binding here and just bind it up to this output and let's test it out. And we're getting a null error. Why is this? Well, let's go look. Now we're getting this null value because before we generate this UUID, this text needs some value. It needs some default value. And if we don't give it a default value, the default value will be null. So we can just come into this text and give it a default value of D and confirm it and let's test it out. All right, great. So now when we generate our UUID, there we get it. Lastly, let me show you a few other things. We've got two other options right here. The first one is exclude from compilation. That's this button right here. So if you enable this, it won't be compiled and thus Flutterflow won't throw any errors if it has some. All right, well, why would you ever want to do this? Well, there can be multiple reasons. Maybe you're still working on the action, you know it has errors, but you want to compile the other actions and widgets and use them and you're going to come back to this one. Or maybe you're going to be exporting this project to GitHub and integrating other resources into this action that it doesn't have access to here. The next option is to include the build context. And the build context in Flutter is an object that has information about the widget in the widget tree. So if you include build context, then when you see the boilerplate, it's going to include this line right here. So we're just going to copy this out of here and paste it into our function. And let's just take a look at this context right here. So let's some room, paste it in. And when we do dot, 
we can see what methods and properties we have available to us. And that's how to build custom actions in Flutterflow.